this is Maxine Hansen of Bobby Uter Peppers and Discs. Today I am joined by Robert Bobby Uter Hansen himself. How's it going guys? We are watching round one of the Bobby Uter Bracket Bonanza. So Bobby Uter, what is this round about? Uh, what we're watching is a match play tournament that we held here locally at PJ Irvin Park mm -hmm. and Forest Park in Bloomington, Illinois. Uh, it's just a fun tournament. It's not sanctioned or anything like that. There is money on the line for the pro division. There was also an AM division competing for, uh, okay for merchandise and prizes. But it was just a fun way to start the year, kind of a tradition we're trying to start. Uh, we'd like to run this event every year. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's see, you can see I just turned over a drive there. We're, watching, <laughs> we're on hole one at PJ Irvin Park going silver to gold basket. Um, it's an uphill about... 250 to 300 foot, very uphill, and you just kind of want to get over to the right. All right. Spencer is lining up his shot. Yeah, unfortunately for the pro division, we didn't have quite enough entries to fill out the entire 16 player bracket oh. so the card we're watching actually had to play first before any other brackets went um we have a very interesting card we have former am world champion spencer wilkin playing against elijah miller who's a local kid who shows some promise and then it's me versus a local pro named hunter warner hmm interesting and there i uh, flub that putt <laughs> we all make mistakes yeah, so I know Hunter on hole one went forehand with a red Excalibur. Every time you see that red disc he's throwing, it's a super beefy Excalibur. And he was getting some crazy skips all day. Oh, yeah. I saw him throwing those. Right, um... Oh, and there he's in. So there's yeah. a quick point for Hunter. If you're not familiar with match play, basically, we're not worried about the overall score of the round so much as winning each individual holes. Uh, both of these courses are only nine hole courses. So that means the first player to five wins or just whoever has the most points after nine holes. All right, I think Elijah, Elijah Miller. I think he's lining up his two here. Mm -hmm. And he misses just barely. It was a very nice shot, though. All right, so after one hole, I'm down by a point pretty quickly. And uh, Spencer and Elijah are still tied. Hole one going to the gold, or hole two heading to the gold basket, is a really it's just a big hyzer over these trees. There is a forehand line, which I think we'll see Hunter throwing, but most players are going to take a mid or a fairway and just yank it out right and hope it drops left. You can see that gold basket down there in between those trees. Oh, absolutely. That's probably nice. the best line to go on anyway. Um. And he looks to be parked. So here's Hunter. And I absolutely love this hole because it's just beautiful and, like, it's really interesting seeing how close you actually are to the basket once you get um, all the way down the hill. It's just, I don't know, it's exciting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty how the trees line up. You can see Hunter, he has this Excalibur in his hand again. Setting up that flick line I mentioned. Big rip. And out of his hand, we didn't think this was going to be that good. And then he just... <laughs> He's blocking it with his body, but he got a fantastic skip off of that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Right, it's been a while since we did this. I'm trying to remember what it is I threw here. I believe this is an Infinite Discs Exodus I'm throwing. I'll just go over the top. A decent shot by Bobby Jeter. Right, so, Spencer Wilkin, known for throwing far, went... Way long on this hole. Of course he did. <laughs> Ooh, up and not quite in. It was back in March when we did this, and I remember it was a pretty cold day, and mm. several of us didn't have time to warm up at all. So it's not going to be a very impressive putting display you're going to see from us here, at least not right off the bat. I know I, for one, struggled immensely with putting today. Though I will admit that everybody, of course, 
did try their very hardest, and all of them did do very well. There it's up. Oh! I was hoping to get that point back that I lost in the first round, because as you can see, Hunter is just right here next to the basket. For an easy two... And he goes right off the band. That was, that was maybe 15 feet for that putt. So I mean, I'm I'm mad that I missed mine, but he's even madder that he missed his. Oh, you can bet. All right, so we decided to swap turns since it's me versus Hunter and Spencer versus Elijah. We took turns which uh, battle threw off the tee pad first. So you'll notice that Spencer threw off first last time, but now Hunter and I are throwing off first. Hunter did not want that much skip into the woods. Hole three, going silver to gold, it's just a short little 200 foot. You just want to get straight and then fade left towards the basket. Heading too straight, like I just did, is an okay mistake to make because you generally are left with a in the circle putt regardless. But you don't want to bail out left too early and be in those uh, in that foliage left. Because even though it's still wintry, the leaves haven't grown in. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of really thin trees and branches and brambles to where it can be very hard to get out. There goes Spencer with a nice straight shot. Yeah, he looks like he ended up pretty similar to where I was. And then we got little Eli. Folks around here call him Whittle. Just to publicly embarrass him a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a whittle. All right, and he looks to be parked <laughs> as well. Right, so there's Spencer hanging out. Up. Oh, and off the band. You can see he's pretty disappointed by that, but it was pretty close. Yeah, we all miss putts. And like I said, none of us were too thrilled with our putting early on this day. Oh, and Elijah easily could have moved up a point on Spencer and just, he has been missing low on every putt so far. Hunter setting up the turbo. He is the captain of the turbo putt mafia. If you make a 30 plus foot turbo putt in his presence, he will stamp your disc. I don't have one, but I also don't ever throw turbo putts, but he's, he'll bang them. And there I am. I really wanted that. It doesn't look like it. I had a tiny window. I tried to just kind of spin it through, and it mm. didn't work out. Yeah. That happens. Okay, so what are we doing here? Okay, silver to gold, hole four. It's about 350 feet, low ceiling. What you want to do is basically flip something up like Spencer's done. Nice that is a nice shot. But that never hooked back up. It was a great line. He's going to find himself 35 or 40 from the basket. Probably about pin high, just way to the right. There's also this forehand line Elijah is taking. And he got that a little too high, a little too stable. I remember this time of year, he was actually coming back from an injury where he had hurt his hip during the winter throwing on some slick tee pads so I know he wasn't throwing full power and there's Hunter with that Excalibur again kind of hit off a tree and I think I'm throwing my trusty pink pharaoh if you guys have never thrown an infinite discs pharaoh this quickly has become one of my favorite discs I've ever thrown oh yeah pharaohs are great oh. Didn't throw it exactly how I want it, but yeah, I got the low, turn. I got a jumper. I've got probably 40 feet from there. All right, you can see Hunter's got a decent distance to go. He's ripping on a rhino here. He was throwing this thing all day. Taking his time. Which is important for take to take your time when you're Line uh, lining up a difficult or even a very easy shot. It's always important to take your time on those things. Yeah, that's right. There's no such thing as an oh. easy shot in disc golf. Oh, and Elijah almost cans it. Yeah, almost. Spencer. Yeah, him and Elijah each have had chances to get points from each other. 
and just neither of them are putting it in the bucket. Here I am, like I said, it's about 35 or 40 feet. It's uphill. Let's go. And it's in. I was pretty happy about that one. <laughs> Looks like you were. Spencer making an easy par, I think. Yeah, yeah. so they yeah. ended up pushing again. I get the tee box back. I'm throwing my <laughs> Legacy Pursuit, another disc you guys should try. Um, that particular one I lost in a creek this year. Oh no, that must be tragedy. Yeah, I, I love that disc. And I, I just didn't put it out left enough. I feel like I can park this hole with the forehand almost every time. But Now, um, this hole, uh, you cannot see it from here, but the gold tee battle a little ways behind the gold tea bed is um <coughs> actually uh sponsored and paid for by bobby jeter's oh, peppers and discs so out. yeah that's right we i like to call it the pepper hole um not so <laughs> much from this silver pad but from the gold pad is a much longer much more beautiful shot um mm -hmm. i think we'll see it in a later round have some nice spicy throws there <laughs> what's spencer lining up here the world may never know I'm real surprised you went mid, not oh dear, and he just barely nicks a branch and goes a little too far left. Get in the hole! That's Elijah. I recognize that as his Bobby Jeter stamped FD3. Whoa. And this is looking great, and then it was just so long. He's probably 50 feet past the basket with a low ceiling, and he didn't even look like he ripped it that hard. Hopefully Spencer will be able to lay it up. Which he does quite nicely. I think he'll be able to make a three. I imagine he was trying to give that a bit of a go. Mm -hmm. And you know Elijah wants to ring this one up here. Mm -hmm. And no. No, so <laughs> Low again. All right. Just barely. Again, you can't really tell because everything is dead, but I had almost no window here. I was just a little too far inside of this dead shul. What were you saying to yourself and there? I could not <laughs> Now we have Hunter. He was probably about 25 feet. Oh, and he just misses another one. There we go. And he cleans up. Very nice. Another push from us, so it sits one to one still between me and Hunter. And assuming Spencer can clean up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can see uh, Brandon Peel over there in the corner. He was actually carrying my bag for me. How nice! It's always good to have a caddy because it really gets uh, oh, on your nerves when your back starts hurting after a while. Yeah, especially in the winter. Mm -hmm. Now this hole, there's other lines you can take, but. The preferred play is just a big hyzer, but every now and then you will see someone catch those power lines. And that uh, does not bode well for one to do. No, yeah. It's the, almost every time you hit those power lines, it's kicking you straight OB, leaving a fun black mark on your disc. Here we go. See if I can put this in the basket. No, not so much. <laughs> now, uh, you... We'll see most of the guys going big ol' hyzer around here, but I think that if you do it well enough, it is possible to just kind of go straight for the basket. If you just maybe skid up the hill a little bit, you'll be completely parked. Well, there's a there's a tree in the way, so if you're going the straight line, you do have to cut it real close to the tree, even mm -hmm. go over the tree. It's kind of looking deadish now. There's also a fun little any route or a forehand route you can take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the Heiser route is definitely by far the safest, I would say. So Hunter's found himself down the hill here. This is a very steep hill. I helped push this basket as close to the edge as it can so we can see some fun rollaways. I don't know that anybody here necessarily would roll away all the way down the hill, or would they? Would they? Would they? I don't know. I don't know either. 
Well, Hunter sure didn't. He was running that. That is a tough putt, though. Yeah, he just sits up there. Yeah, with a hill like that, it's always... it. Usually, it's better to just play it safe. Um, and if you're going to uh, try to run the putt, it's uh, almost always better to try and keep it as flat or nose up as you can so that it doesn't roll down the hill. Cause... I can tell you, I really wanted that putt. Oh, yeah. I... I... I'm mad watching me miss that again. <laughs> that's that's three or four putts I could have put in already today. Good putt. Elijah in for the two. Nice. And Spencer with the tap. And so they're going to push again. It's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Spencer versus Elijah. Pew. And that's it. So silver to gold this is another one. It's about 300 feet, low ceiling. Best play is a hyzer flip to flat or just a big hyzer like this. Mm. If I recall, you aced this hole one time. Um, I actually aced the silver basket. We're going to the gold basket on this ah, one. Ah, okay. Yeah. There is a forehand line. For the forehand to work, you really have to get a big skip. And that's looking and pretty good. And but it just doesn't skip enough. He'll be putting, yeah. but far from being parked. Spencer going for what appears to be a sort of anti route, but he goes quite a bit too far right. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what he was trying to go for there, but it definitely flipped and kept going. I imagine he was going for a similar hyzer flip route to what I took, and just... Elijah with a forehand as well. That's his Brinster Destroyer, if I know his bag, and he just tries <laughs> to throw it a little too hard. I know he doesn't want to lose to Spencer. The hop of anger. That's what that was. Spencer acts as both a mentor and a foil nice to shot. Elijah a lot of times. <laughs> that was an amazing upshot from where he was. We're going to see in a minute. I'm pretty sure he's just a couple feet from the basket. And that was from probably 225, 250 feet away. Which is a great comeback from, especially since he just hit the ground with it. It's a very good shot to come back yeah, with. Yeah, see, he just laid up right next to Elijah's. Yeah, so here's Hunter. He... Like I said, he needed probably 50 more feet to skip. So hopefully he can get pretty darn close to the basket, if not in. And he just barely misses it. Goes a little bit past, but he should be able to make that putt for par. So here I am. I think this is right around circle's edge. And I'm just flopping them today. Easy par. Fuck me. Oh, and Hunter misses another short yes, one. Sir. That gives me a one-stroke lead over Hunter now. Not how I want to do it, but I'll take it. Now, hole eight here. So what's probably uh, one of the better lines for this hole? Well, oh, yeah. going to the gold basket, this is actually one of the trickier holes on the course because it's very hard to reach. <laughs> it's probably about 400, 450 feet, but slightly uphill, very low ceiling. Um, almost This is a tweener hole, almost plays as a par four. I like to go straight up the middle, try to get as far as I can. Uh, but there is, you saw Elijah and Spencer, they took the hyzer out. Really, you just want to get up on the hill. Mm, yeah. um, then it's an easier upshot. You don't want to be taking a four here. Yeah. So I rip on the sparrow job, again. Brother. And somehow yeah, we miss my, my upshot. But that was by far one of the farthest drives I have seen on this hole. And definitely my best drive ever on it. Nice. I will uh, say that there are trees that you have to avoid. But it's much more important on this hole to go for the distance. Um... Because, you know, there's not a huge likelihood that you're going to hit a tree. Uh, and it's just more important to see how far you can get. Yeah, well, it's also a bit of a placement shot. Because you want to get up on the hill. Oh, he's going for the roller here. I forgot about this. Really wanted that to work. It kind of curled up. He's not in a terrible spot. But so you see where Elijah is. 
He, uh, he ended up behind this tree. And so more than anything, you've got to find yourself somewhere with a clean look off the tee here. That's that FD3 again, I think. And he just, just cooked it too much. Yeah, so Hunter, that roller, he got him right to the top of the hill. Which is so, really not a bad shot. Yeah, it's fine. I think he's trying to throw it in. Oh, yeah. And it's up. A decent bit. He's right up against the basket. Yeah, he should have a pretty easy par. Yeah, so Spencer, he went for the big hyzer, but now he's got himself a nice open look. Just a little flick touch-up shot. And that comes down right next to the basket. Very nicely done. All right, so this is Elijah for three. And Spencer's already under the basket to tap in his three. So if Elijah can't make this probably 70-footer, Okay, so that picture there, that's where my drive ended up. I had probably 60, 70 feet jump putt. It ended up right here. It didn't go in. But it was one of the easier threes I've ever had on this hole. And there's Elijah. He didn't care. He'd already lost the point. <laughs> All right, so this is a downhill, low ceiling, 350 maybe. Yeah, probably less than that. Probably 300 feet. Oh, yeah. I'm throwing my Exodus again, and I'm just trying to get it to turn around these trees, and it was just starting to look good, and it just squared it up. Should be easy up from there, but I'm not looking at it too. Uh, there's a iconic raised basket on hole nine, so if you're not close to it, you really gotta believe in yourself if you're gonna run the putt. Oh, yeah. I've taken some really bad scores on this hole going to gold. It's just, it's really difficult to put uh, that far up. Oh! There you see Hunter got a huge skip, almost goes in the street. Which is the street OB in this? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's a good thing he didn't stay there, huh? Oh, for sure. See, so one of the tricky things about this hole is it's probably a mid-range distance, but with the ceiling, if you're going backhand, you almost want to throw the fairway driver Spencer instead. Spencer headed right for that tree, and he does hit it, but he's not too far from the basket, so he should still have a decent look. Yeah, he was throwing a, an EMAC truth there. He's recently switched his whole bag to Trilogy. Hmm. Elijah going the forehand route. I like this play. But you have to navigate around a few more trees for it to work. You just want to throw something over stable straight down the hill like he's done. Let it hook up. That's nice. See, there he is. He's going to be circle's edge. Oh, there's my upshot. A little upshot. far left. Bloop. Still Decent short. upshot. Yeah. Spencer hoping to get it in from... About 50-ish feet away. And not so much. All right, so here's Hunter. Keep in mind, I'm beating Hunter by one point right now. And I'm, I'm very close for my three. So he needs to make this to tie mm, at yeah. two points each. Because pushing on the hole is not going to be good enough. Let's see what he can do. It looks and close. It's up, and it's over. Barely. He was so close to making right, it. It was now, a very good effort. This is a raised basket, and I've been missing my putts today. So I still need to make mine. But here's Elijah. This is to tie Spencer. If he doesn't make this, then Spencer wins the match. This is a good 30-footer uphill. Yeah. And, and in. It. That's his best putt of the day. Comes at a very critical moment. Yes. Here I am. I'm pretty close. I'm throwing a legacy closer here. And it's in the basket. All right. So I I was able to defeat Hunter in the first round. But we have a playoff. All right. So during the playoff, if you don't know, um, the two people who are tied, or whoever, however many people are tied, um, will throw in 
uh, on traditionally the first hole or just whatever hole that is chosen. Um, and really they just play until one uh, gets a higher score. And that determines the winner. Right, so they are in sudden death mode. Elijah's drive was pretty good. He went that forehand line again. And Spencer was still playing with some discs. He had a world and a musket in his bag that he was just kind of fooling around with. And he was flipping them up and they were gliding for days. I feel like I feel like this is his musket he's throwing Holy here. Cow. And he's in about the same spot he was round one, actually. Now, whoever makes the putt, if uh, either of them. <sighs> Elijah Lowe again. All right, so Spencer's got the exact same putt he had from earlier in the round. So this time, hopefully, he can make it. But we'll still have to see. This is an awfully nice angle for a putt. Like like filming? Yeah, like film-wise, because it's just... Oh. This is my favorite, no matter who's playing. Yeah, shout out to Bobby York. He was helping me film, uh, especially during the rounds where I was playing. I also TD'd this tournament, so after I finished my round, I ran across to Forest Park to help start getting things set up over there for all the remaining players. We actually had a decent-sized field. I believe there were... 12 players in open and between 12 and 16 in uh, amateur. Oh, that's nice. It's good to have people come out for tournaments, especially in this yeah. weather. Uh, yeah, March when it's cold, but also an unsanctioned event that we we're just doing for fun. Uh, I was very thankful for the turnout we had. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, was a great, it was a great time. Yeah. And since they uh, tied on the last hole, they will be continuing to play. So... They're playing hole two again. Yep, Both I... going for the hyzer route backhand. And Spencer does appear to have hit a branch of some kind, yeah, and he... I think he dropped. Yeah, he caught that last tree and just fell straight down. Didn't see exactly where Elijah's ended, but it looked like it was going to be pretty good. It's probably 35, maybe 40 feet. I don't think it's quite 40. It's up, and it's in. Nice. Those are the kind of putts that made him a former Am World Champion. And Elijah finally cans a shorty. So we push again. We are now on the third hole of this sudden death. And... It's a bit low to the ground, and I don't think that's what he wanted to do. There's some feet. <laughs> you like the judge? Yeah, so Elijah, oh. he just kept his too low. I'm pretty sure he got caught Jay, up in those brambles man. there. Mm -hmm. So now Spencer's just got to put this close. I'm sure he had good intentions. <laughs> I mean, I have good intentions every time I throw my frisbee. I think he's throwing a justice here. I believe, I believe he got that from me. Beautiful. That was a very nice skip off to the left. Yeah, that that justice used to be in my bag. I gave him a lot of my discs in order to help him make the transition. Yeah, so Spencer was absolutely parked. He tapped it in, and that was the match. So congratulations to me and to Spencer. Uh, we'll be moving on to round two. Thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time. And remember to stay mmm spicy. Mmm spicy. Yeah.